Well, those elections are just three weeks away and candidates are out campaigning hard, many promising investment and regeneration in areas of Victoria suffering high unemployment. Geelong is one area that is an attraction for all parties. Labor chose the city as the spot to launch its campaign. So what do the people of Geelong want from the election and from their politicians? Darren Lyons is the city's very colourful mayor and he joins us now via webcam. Sporting a new hairstyle there. <laughs> well, oh, it's not new. It's not been here since the Melbourne Cup, oh, uh, Eliza okay. and Andrew. I'm but, sorry, uh, don't I worry. Been there'll, enough there'll be a new one that. next week, I'm sure. Oh, we're getting ready for Christmas, and I've got to meet the kids on the uh, the waterfront and fly to Westfield for the tree. So, of course, Australia's going to have the world's, or well, the Australia's biggest uh, on water Christmas tree this year. So, we're gearing up in uh, the beautiful red and green, ready to go All with right. the kiddies. So, you're talking Christmas, but beforehand, you've got a um, you've got a poll to go to. Now, we know that Geelong has been going through some tough times. What assistance specifically do Geelong people want from their politicians? Well, look, there's no, no, no reason, not only Geelong, but all the G21 area, which not only is Mayor of the City of Greater Geelong, but also is Chair of G21. Uh, obviously, uh, the big ones has been the bipartisan, which is GPAC, but really, that's a state government facility anyway, which has been bipartisanly promised. But the most important is actually uh, economic uh, drivers for the community and uh, that hasn't really come this election yet in terms of promises. Uh, the Yarra Street Pier and uh, the uh, 21st Century Smart Tourism City campaign not only is the number one priority of the region but also of the city of Greater Geelong, it is also very high on the agenda together with a convention exhibition stroke conference centre as well. I mean the fact of the matter is it's all about jobs and it's about economic drivers here and something that we really can leverage off uh, from private the PPP investment. Uh, it was uh, done by the Kennett government way back uh, 25 years ago on the waterfront. 30 million invested, returned uh, more than $650 million in private investment, which means jobs. And uh, really, when you look at it, from a, a peer and convention centre, it creates over 1,000 jobs. For me, it's a no-brainer. Uh, and, and for the people of Geelong, want to see jobs and also a revitalised CBD, which the... Uh, as mayor and councillors, we are getting on with with a with a 10 million investment. Uh, we've already had three and a half million investment promise from the government so far, and then the usual uh, the schools and the really uh, uh, kinders and uh, uh, education. What usually comes through uh, from both sides uh, of government. Darren, uh, from an outsider's point of view, those people outside of Victoria, the news or the headlines from the election campaign seem to be all about infrastructure projects, specifically road and rail links. Uh, yeah. Do you feel as though there's too much concentration and argy-bargy in politics over those particular issues at the expense of job creation projects? Oh, look, oh, look I think infrastructure is extremely important. I think uh, being a young country, I think we've been slow on it. I still don't understand. You've got to remember, you took me to, to a guy that uh, lived half of his life in, in Europe and particularly London and Paris and, and an underground. I don't know why we don't have an underground system in Melbourne, but specifically talking about Geelong, we got rid of uh, a light rail here in terms of our trams. Bendigo and Ballarat still hold on to them, but there's been a lot of mistakes over, over, over history uh, and including our, our own CBD. But certainly the East-West link, which is a real big hot contender for this election, I mean, for Geelong people, it's a no-brainer. We need to get our, our community uh, to and from uh, quicker from Melbourne. Uh, I, if I had my way, I'd love to see it down the track in 20, 30, 40 years of bullet train from Geelong to Melbourne because we are Melbourne's next CBD. We are growing uh, in terms of uh, 11% in, in, in house growth down here. People are living, loving Geelong and coming here and there are also a lot more jobs here so that people can live here and not necessarily have to travel. Well, so I mean, the, we want the to keep argument, our talent here. Sorry, the argument, of course, is that uh, the, these will create jobs in the short term, but I'm speaking more about long-term uh, job creation projects, perhaps and obviously also with the loss of industries such as the car-making industry in Geelong. Well, that's right. I mean, I, t look, I, I totally agree with exactly where you're coming from. Sustainable jobs is actually key to the future of Geelong and its economy. And that's why leveraging the infrastructure of private investment is the only way forward. I don't expect governments to build the infrastructure that you can't leverage off private investment. Look, the East West Link is going to be important. There's no doubt for the community down here because the West Gate just is not good enough to get our people back and from to see their families, whether it be in the morning or at night time. But the issue is, is there's no doubt that um, uh, private public partnerships are a key to the future, not only in Geelong uh, uh, and Victoria, but all over Australia. Have a look what the, everyone is doing around the world and where uh, investment from uh, America is going now. It's pouring a lot of money into, in, in, into rail as well and quicker rail and safer rail. Mr. So Lyons. there's no doubt, yes, we do live in a big country, 
Uh, in fact, Victoria is the, is the size of the whole of Great Britain. But we need to be planning for the future, and I, I think that there is a fair bit of planning going for the future. But look, I... government handouts are going to become less and less as, as the population increases. Mayor, what can we've I got to do is make much quickly, better use of our money. We're, we're running out of time. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I do want to ask you finally, is Dennis Napstein the right man to help all of these things that you've just discussed? Is he the right man to bring them to Geelong? Well, look, Dennis Napthine uh, is very much a Geelong man and has had a very strong focus on Geelong. But the, at the end of the day, we've got to look at uh, more, more from Dennis uh, to commit from PPP. Look, the community is screaming out uh, for their peer and they're screaming out for their convention conference centre. We'll see over the next couple of weeks, uh, both parties, not only, uh, not only the Premier, uh, but also uh, Daniel Andrews and what they're going to deliver because things have gone quite certainly uh, from a Labor front down here but the, but the Premier has spent a lot of time and there has been a lot of investment by the government over Darren. recent weeks but I want to leverage off private investment and that's what the people want. We want jobs down here. Darren Lyons, uh, oh, thanks so much. You've been most illuminating as far as what's going on in Geelong. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks very much because we're now going to take you to Melbourne where the Premier Dennis Napthine is with the Prime Minister Tony Abbott. I would have known.